and it will be locked patch. in. Yeah. A Pantheon on this patch has, I mean, I know I, I, I do apologize for us telling everyone the patch notes repeatedly because I know a lot of you guys watch other regions, but not everybody does. But Pantheon does more damage to jungle camps on this patch. So it's a significant buff he's received. Allows him to clear faster, makes him relevant in the jungle One. again. Well, as it turns out, there are more T1 fans in Low Park at the moment. But yeah, I, I, I'm really excited as after post six where T1 decide to fight and what the priority is going to be, whether it's Herald priority or Drake priority for them. Because like you said, this team fighting comp in skirmishing comp is so good in those parts. And if T1 win it decisively, they get such a lead. So it's worth trying and they could just walk away from it if it doesn't work out or if they don't have the prio set up for it. Four members rotating up. If Prince can also get a lot here, but Croco's gonna go for the engage. Zayas taking the brunt of the damage here as the Sultan Battery comes down. That's first blood going over to the Orbit Deception from the Ari. As Zayas also is burning down, but Gumiushi, he's made it into the fight. Can he actually pop off? Finds the ult. Dove body slams to get himself away. Dredge line is fantastic. And Vault Breaker is going to be there. Live Sandbox are gonna be able to get out, although Gumiushi is still going very far forward. Faker's now underneath the turret. The stun comes through and Kale has the shield. Oh dear, this is a lot of aggression, Wolf. Silver, Silver picks up a plate bottom side here and is timid about getting a second one, knowing that owner has respawned, does have his starfall back available. Oh, I say back available, he didn't use it. Well, Zayas, he's booking it, running real fast towards this fight now as the Orbit Deception does a little bit of damage. It looks like Ona won't be able to get over here. He's slowed down. There's the cast. Dredgeline doesn't quite hit the mark as now they're going to try and go in onto the Pantheon who takes so much damage. He's been tanking forever though. The Vi is going to be traded. Zayas now just walking it out as Prince is on the wrong side of the fight. The Charm picks up Gumiushi though. The hook is going to land, but the Empress Divide is just amazing. Not enough to save Gumiushi. And now Closer is looking to clean this one up. Prince is going to grab it with the Boomerang Blade and Liv Sandbox win another fight. Liv Sandbox win a fight, grab Herald. Unfortunately, Dove is the one who holds the eye, so they can't drop it down here just now. Starfall can turn a fight, but if you're just walking in this Pantheon, why'd you pick this one, you know? And yeah. he uh, absorbs the wild growth so that Guma can't. Well, he's going to dive on top of this Gragas, but closes over here. The Everfrost is fantastic. Cast is just going to pick off Zayas, and Croco will get in here. Sultan Battery doesn't really care about your Emperor's Divide as Faker is just going to blast cone his way out. Here. And obviously the Horizon Focus is going to be way better against the Pantheon and the Sejuani, but not as good against the Zeri. Well, they're looking for a bit of a flank play here as the Assault and Battery comes down and Liv Sandbox say, don't mind if I do. The Glacial Prison leaves a bit to be desired as Croco picks up the kill on the Sejuani and now Carrier completely out of position. They are going to be able to lock that one down very comfortably as Closer is on the chase. Looking to lock down his former teammates here, but they'll settle for a dragon. That's going to be a two Drake lead here, and we'll find out what the soul is going to be. Would be a nightmare scenario, I think, for T1 here if it is Hextech or Mountain, and the chances of either are quite high. So oh, they're um, not wanting to take the risk right now, wanting to catch someone out uh, beforehand. I think taking these fights sooner than later is definitely optimal. Well, Croco is just going to try and walk past the Sejuani. He's taking so much damage, though. The Depth Charge just bought so much space. His Closer takes down yet another kill. Ona dies is basically an afterthought as Gumiushi is ulted, but I just don't see an angle that he can actually stand and do damage. But I, I still... Man, I, I'm trying to come to terms with how good Closer is playing after seeing him have a really rough time earlier on. As Kyle is probably going to die. He has There's the explosive watch. cast. He doesn't use the stopwatch as this Drake is going to get taken down. That is soul point. But now Croco is going to have to get out of here. Dove, I don't think he's going to survive this one as the Grand Skyfall does come through, or the Grand Starfall, as it is now called. And that is two kills for T1 to answer back. I was worried that owner's R key on his keyboard was broken for a little while, but we do have now evidence that it is working. Indeed. <laughs> staggered kills on Live Sandbox who were slightly overextended. But where's the front to back team fight here? We're gonna have to see that before we can believe T1 has a chance. Well, Glacial Prison does connect. Uh, there is a great Everfrost. The follow up's beautiful as well. Look at the bouncy castle from Live Sandbox. The Piggy was not having a great time as now Closer is dashing forward. Looks for Carrier. Actually, looks for Gumiyushi. Doesn't find him there with the charm. 
And look, Sandbox, they'll settle for the inner turret for now. But these fights, every time one little bit of CC lands, it's the entire house. He's got it upgraded once, not the longest cooldown ever. Well, Croco's decided that he's going to go for the fight. He manages to get into the back line onto Gumiyushi. He's trying to get out of there. And immediately, closer is polymorphed. Is the hook connect? What the heck was that, Kyle? That is going to seal the deal on this team fight. Faker's going to get flashed on. It's a double kill for Prince. And Liv Sandbox are done. They want to finish this game right here, right now. This, like we said, this is the most Liv Sandbox comp that they have ever been allowed to get. T1 let them draft this. They let them have it, and yeah, there are some really good parts of T1's comp. They are very good at scaling. They have some good skirmishing power, but they never got to show it. They never got to use it. They fell behind to closer early, and it's lights out. Yeah, these Nexus turrets going to be next on the menu as that charm. Andreas is going to spell his end, at least after this stopwatch does go down. Immediately, two kills come through. This last Nexus turret will go down and lift Sandbox. They are one game away from taking down T1 like not many other teams have been able to do this year and even this season. First Nexus is going to hit the deck. Yeah, the and box. look at the difference between Prince and Gumiushi this game. This really does show that Sivir is starting to massively get ahead of the Zeri in a lot of these matchups. And I think that she will need to be respected in the next draft or Burst damage, they've got it all. Well, uh, it could be Blitzcrank. Courier doesn't look very confident in it. But well, of course, the player cam. yeah, we have to remember Blitzcrank's ability to deal with shields as well um, of the Tom Kench. So if the Devourer comes through, then he spits someone out. They've got a big old shield. Blitzcrank presses his R, R button. As T1, what you are attempting to do here is slow somebody down with a Jinx Zap or get a hook get Jinx excited, and then basically steamroll quite literally with Swain, Wukong, and Sage Wani just running at Liv Sandbox with all the CC they provide. You know, we are going to see the Imperial Mandate here for Swain. All right, here we are, finally back all of the runes absolutely sorted out as T1 move over to the blue side. This has been their most successful side so far. Well, um, especially when you've got a troll coming from behind the turret looking to try and lock this one down. All right, can this dive actually work? Is the flash still available here for Crocos? Never move is going to connect. Faker is on a merry jaunt as Closer's going to come on in with the Shifting Sands. Yeah, Vision of Empire is only going to see the Vision of First Blood going over to Closer uh, whenever he feels like it. As Faker now with a minion wave underneath his turret. Closer? Be able to uh, close the gap a little. Closer's going to get a turret plate uh, at this stage. Grabbing him is up. Well, Gumiushi taking a fair bit of damage here as well as Karius is getting poked down. Red White Guns here for Prince are so scary. As Faker has demonically ascended, there's the Emperor's Divide. Closer will be able to avoid the huge explosion, and it's just a trade of ultimates in the end. T1 going to group up here for Herald. Well, Cask is going to go entirely wide here as Faker's going to turn up. Looks to try and lock down a kill, and I think he should be able to. The demonic ascension is going to help out. And first, the first kill for T1 will go over to Ona. Yeah, this is going to be pretty huge for them, grabbing control of this Herald now. And Subjugate, not really utilized in this fight. Not able to get it there in time. Don't want to waste it. Krakow's going to catch this wave. Azir going to back. So Closer certainly does. Prince is pushing here for this bottom lane, though, as uh, Krakow is rotating down. And Gumiushi does have Carrier on the way. Flame Chompers come on in there as well, as now Prince trying to lock down the kill under the Jinx. As the Devour comes through, and all too easily, Liv Sandbox will be able to pick up the kill under the Jinx. Owner's rotating down. Vision of Empire was there from Faker but not much more from the Swain can be given as he's got a minion wave to pick up. After his season last season, it's just uh, mind-boggling that he's gotten this much better. Yeah, it's crazy what what he's been able to do just as he... I don't want to call him a shot caller per se. Is Okay, hold on. Closer has flash. Yep, never move does come through here as well. Holds onto it for as long as possible as the Emperor's Divide Shifting Sands is going to get closer well and truly out of dodge. 
This is really important for Closer to not overextend here and give over some kills because that's the way this T1 comp works and it, it just becomes extremely comfortable to play if Faker and the Wukong start to get ahead. Owner already has one kill. Well, Hook comes through here as Croco is going to need to subjugate. Does do so, but is going to still be taken down. Owner picks up that kill. Now Closer's trying to get the autos through but doesn't have enough mana for the Conquering Sands or the Shifting or anything like well, that's that. definitely good news if you're a Sandbox fan. But now Carrier going for even more. Zaius finds the Glacial Prison and this is the kind of follow up that we've learned to expect from T1 and finally they'll be able to deliver it. The Azir also falls down as he burns. Well, I think almost did it accidentally. As all right, Gumishi's gonna have to flash, but Croco's making his way in. Moonlight Vigil comes down and Prince locks up that kill very comfortably. They take the turret as well as the Cyclone will come in. Now, Ona, can you get any more out of this as Fake is going to come down? Ona will fall, but can the cleanup actually come through Prince? Now trying to fight it out against Carrier, Faker against Dove and Croco together, and he's losing out on the trade. Carrier's gonna go down, there's the cast to divide the fight here, try and keep Closer alive, who manages to walk it out, gives him the thumbs up as well, as Zayas will be taken. My God, what did Closer have for breakfast? I mean, I just never thought I'd see the day that we'd be watching Liv Sandbox out hand. Zayas is 100% by himself, and that meant that Closer was given his opportunity to escape. Now Croco's gonna get engaged on Emperor's Divide to try and split up the fight, but still, they're able to take down Croco, and now Liv Sandbox, no way to stick around for this one. Surely belongs to T1. Never move, not gonna connect there. As Liv Sandbox, I mean, they can win a fight and then they instantly lose one. And it's happened over and over again this game. Yeah, T1's comp, when the game state is like this, it still works very well. And it's starting to get easier and easier as Faker starts to get more items. When he gets his Rhylice, that's when he's really going to be online. And this is going to be a, another charge coming through from this Herald. Well, Moonlight Vigil comes down. It's a lot of damage. The hook connects onto the Tom Kench, but he just wants to eat that Grey Health. And he's going to be pretty happy. Great Devour there from Kyle, who spits out Prince. And the Jinx Turns is already being taken. Look at Dove. He's just in the back line murdering everyone. What is going on? It's so many kills over to Prince. It's a triple. It's an ace. And it's an ace for Liv Sandbox. And Closer was top lane. Attention. No I reason know, I know, I know. to hard force this. You get a hook with the, with the Blitzcrank. You see what you can get. You do not need to be between turrets. Oh my god, Kyle is too good at this game, Wolf. And he's too good at Tom Kench. Yeah, man. I regret saying I didn't think it was as good of a pick now. No, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, it, he's so good at engage that I completely understand. As we're straight into another fight, Zayas is going to go down. Prince gets another kill. He's 7 0 and 3. As Kerry is going to get knocked up, that's another one. Make it 8 0 and 3. He's legendary. Oh no. Oh, is going to no. get knocked up. Dove finds himself a barrel as well as Ona has no. No other option other than to try and get as much damage down as possible. And Liv Sandbox are just picking T1 off. This is going to be Soul Point now going over to Liv Sandbox. And Zayas looking for a flank. He was spotted. Closer's like, I believe. Do I, Closer's like, do I want to run or do I want to kill? I want to kill. <laughs> yeah, he, he does definitely want to kill as he puts up the Sun Disc. And Zayas makes it back to Faker. So he's going to be all right. Yeah. And Prince is just so extraordinarily gigantic. And when he has a Tom Kench as well. Prince can basically frontline. We've seen it already. Is Croco's going to face check? Okay. Well, can they actually kill him? As he's got subjugate, there's a devour there as well. Close is going to turn up. Zayas is fed to Prince. And now Fake is going to get popped back. Also fed to Prince. Prince is just lapping up the members of T1. 11 kills now as Closer dashes in. That might have been a step too far, but he does have the stopwatch or his onions. I'm not entirely sure what it is at this stage. He's got a flash available too afterwards, doesn't have to use it. Oh just man. Shuffles his way out and I think it is stopwatch he just broke there. Either way, that's a turret. Yeah. Stopwatch is broken. He went straight for the Nashers second where they fall apart at the end. Closer very alone here. Yeah, Dove also a little bit out of position as the Baron is going to be taken down. Oh no, looking for his opportunity. Dove, flash, body slam, gets to safety. What is this? Emperor's Divide on turn three and it's a massacre for Liv Sandbox. Prince is so safe over the wall. Immediately it's a double kill as T1 are getting routed. Gumiyushi, the last man standing and Liv Sandbox may complete the 2-0 right now. I think they will. Guma getting just chunked down by a trundle. Oh my goodness. He's underneath the turret. He does not care. Uh, Kyle might also die, but instead uh, it's just going to be the Jinx falling. That's a Sandbox. Yeah, they pick up the ace and they are going to win this game. They're going to win this series. 
2-0 against T1 and claim sole possession of third place. A 23 and a half minute victory against T1, our second place team here in the LCK. They made it look easy. Not one part of this series was close. Neither game for even a second did T1 have control. In the scoreline of this Aphelios was just absurd in this game. 23 minute game, Prince has fed so many kills. Dove did his job beautifully both games. I'm you starting to really love Dove as a top lane. Yeah, you just can't let this guy play safe top picks. He plays. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the POG interview, joined by the POGs from Lips and Bus Closer and Prince after taking down T1 2-0. With this win, you guys are confirmed third place of the regular split and also qualified for Worlds Gauntlet. It was a very important um, match for us, and I'm so happy that we got the win. And thank you, Prince, for carrying us. Yeah, I mean, we knew that, you know, if we take down Freddy Furnia, we'll still make Gauntlet. <laughs> I mean, like, make Gauntlet, not Worlds, but still, you know. Yeah, we knew that after getting another match win, we will be able to still make Worlds Gauntlet, but still, I'm so happy that we took down a strong team called T1. How was playing against your former team, Closer? It meant a lot to me and I really wanted to win. And finally, I got the win over T1. And um, Prince, we actually had three uh, players tied for POG later, but with this POG, you are now on the first place. Well, yeah, and Zeus was also tied for the first place. So I was like, yeah, the winner tonight will be the POG leader. I had this feeling. And welcome back to Old Park, Prince. How was playing in front of the live audience? Do you feel like even stronger with live fans out here? Absolutely. I think I get to play better when I get to perform in front of the live audience and fans and their cheers and chants. I mean, we have so many things to celebrate today, you know? The third seed for the playoffs and also the world's gauntlet. I mean, you guys also had the idea that beating Bro will bring you all this wi all this stuff, but still, today was a very important day. So what was on your mind on your way to Low Park? Well, I mean, it was since like last night. I really wanted to win because today was a big day, but I was also a little bit more nervous than usual. I mean, we lost to T1 more than we won T1, so... And there were not many matches where I played well to bring my team to victory, but today I finally had the game I wanted. In game number one, you guys are actually acting like you guys are trying the Herald, but instead you guys then jumped over the wall to open a team fight. So at that time, I was getting ready for the team fight, and then Kuroko was making the call to focus fire on the Pantheon. So with that call, we were able to actually show the best value out of our comp. And also the second Herald fight was the um, game ender, to be honest. And Closer, you were the playmaker on Ari game number one. However, there were many picks on the side of T1 that can actually shut down Ari. So I was so fed, you know. I had Zonia's Ever Frost, so I was feeling confident to just go in and set up for fights because I have Sivir behind me to do the, do the damage and as a follow-up. And then in game two, as Sivir and Zeri got banned, we had a Felius Jinx matchup, a very classic one this summer split, and then we knew that Jinx was having a huge favor of this matchup, 12 to 3. So was that on your mind, especially the fact that Felius was on a six-game losing streak? Well, Aphelios is definitely one of my confident pick, and also other than the Aphelios pick, all, but also my teammates were doing a great job, so I was not worried about you know losing the game because of that Aphelios lock-in. 
First off, you know, well, I mean, my support, uh, my team did support me really well, but still, I have to say that I carried the game because I did well. Now, let's take a look at uh, the replay where T1 actually forced a turret dive around the tier 2 turret on the mid lane. Tom Kent got hooked, so what was your kind of plan to play out this team fight? Well, Azir was pushing top, so we were like, let's just defend what we can defend. And then, you know, T1 actually did a decent job setting up for this team fight, but I think we kind of outplayed them. Were you expecting this ace in this 4v5 team fight? I mean, after that team fight, everyone was just shouting my name out. But I think it was not only my play, but also just the entire team playing their best at this team fight. But today, not only you, um, Prince, but also Kyle did a fantastic job, and so many fans are having the the Holy Angel fan sign to kind of show their shout out over to Kyle as well. Well, I kind of call him the ogre because he never talks, you know, he has no emotion. He's not that loud, but this time around, I could see that he was so happy that he was actually like showing his emotion after getting a huge win. And today, Tati, uh, the um, owner of Leap Sandbox, also made his way to Low Park, and he, and he made, made a pledge that he's going to cash in some bonus if you guys take down T1. So any words over to him? I mean, we were playing against T1, so I'm expecting a bonus um, as big as, you know, the size of T1 as an orc, so I'm looking forward to it. What about your closer? I'm looking forward to a very nice team dinner after this interview. I'm very, I'm very curious to find out what was the CEO's bonus after this interview. Now, Live Sandbox took down DRX, Tamon, Kia, KT, and then T1. You guys has beaten all of the playoff teams so far. Your next opponent will be Freddy Brion. I was watching the match earlier today and they were doing a great job actually. So I hope we can prepare hard for the um, upcoming last match of the regular split. I mean, the god Freddy Brion, they are not behind in gold at about 8 to 10 minute mark in the series earlier today. So I will do my best to put up a great fight into the god Giga Chat Freddy Brion. And this will be the end of the interview from the POGs of Leap Sandbox and back to the carpet space. Thank you.